Ten years after 9-11, we still don't know what happened. We do know there was a lot of molten metal at the World Trade Center, and we know that the fires could not be put out. We also know that the official reports cannot explain the evidence, and that independent scientists have published a series of articles that confirm the extremely high temperatures that were present at Ground Zero. These peer-reviewed scientific articles put the official reports in a new light and suggest that thermitic materials can explain all the data. Thermitic materials are based on the thermite reaction, which gives off extreme amounts of heat. The most recent of these scientific articles examines red chip-like materials that are found throughout the World Trade Center dust. These chips ignite at the temperature of nanothermite and release energy in a sharp burst at levels on par with high explosives. The ignited chips form metallic microspheres that look just like those from nanothermites and that have the same chemical fingerprint as known thermite residues. I've received a lot of World Trade Center dust myself and I've seen the red chips and previously molten materials that are scattered throughout. I've also made some nanothermites that look strikingly similar to some of these red chips. And I've done some ignition experiments and looked at the residues. I've also, unfortunately, seen the disinformation that mainstream media has put out. Hello, Governor. My name is Van Romero, and I understand you have some questions about superthermite. Well, let's do an experiment. The first step in the experiment is to make the liquid superthermite. We mix it in with the paint, and then we have our superthermite liquid paint. That is not how nanothermite is made. Iron oxide is not soluble in typical solvents, but maybe they use something else. We'll try to show you how nanothermite is made in this video. Today we're going to make some nanothermite. And here are the supplies that we're going to use. Uh, we are going to start with uh, some beakers and a stir plate. And then we're going to make a solution of iron chloride and ethanol. Iron chloride is a solid material with a yellowish orange is color, uh, fairly chunky, and we will weigh that out and dissolve it in ethanol. To that will be added um, some sort of organic material that can form a matrix within the solution. One option that we've used before is a fluorinated silane and uh, that's the kind that's used by BF Clapsaddle at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. But today we're going to use uh, a material called Viton, which is uh, an organic material with fluorine as well, but no silicone. And that's going to be dissolved in acetone and also then in ethanol. But this is what Viton looks like. It's a solid material. It's kind of flexible. It's called a fluoroelastomer. To that solution, we'll add propylene oxide. Propylene oxide will convert the iron chloride into iron oxide in the solution. A reaction will actually occur. And then, to this solution, will be added aluminum as actually the material starts to gel. The propylene oxide also causes the solution to start to gel. And as it's doing so, we'll either add nano aluminum, like this material here, purchased from the Argonide Corporation, or some um, unopened, as yet, micron-sized aluminum that I just purchased. Okay, so when the Viton is completely dissolved in the acetone, we add some ethanol and let that all mix together. And we've done that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to making a solution of iron chloride, again in an alkaline acetone and ethanol mixture. According to Alexander Gash, 
whose um, formulation we're following today. And again, this is from the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. And so there is the solution of acetone and ethanol, and I'm going to add, in this case, 13.4 grams of iron chloride. So we'll see what that does. Makes a nicely colored solution. I have a red-orange solution when it's fully dissolved. It looks yellow at first. Kind of a reddish-orange colored solution is what will result. As we can see here, the iron chloride has all dissolved in the mixture of acetone and ethanol. And it formed this red orange solution as we expected. We're going to add the propylene oxide and we have to add it in small increments, actually in, in quarters, because it generates a lot of heat and, um, and we don't want the solution to boil over. So this is how it's done. And we're going to add the propylene oxide in these increments. Alright, so the propylene oxide has all been added, and you can see the solution has turned a, a nice, rich, dark red color. It's uh, quite a bit different than the reddish-orange color before the propylene oxide was added. Now we're going to add the uh, Viton solution to this. So now we're ready to add uh, about 6 grams of powdered aluminum. This is micron sized aluminum in this case. We're going to let that mix together and gel. It did gel very well together, stuck together, and uh, for our experiment we're going to t take the uh, gel, which I've already done, the hardened gel, and break it up into smaller pieces. If we take just a couple grams of this nanothermite and put it in a smaller beaker on a hot plate, and raise the hot plate to its maximum temperature, which is 550 degrees Celsius. This should cause the material to ignite. We'll add a loose lid to the beaker to demonstrate the pressure volume work effects that the expanding gas should produce. Even with this very small quantity, it should ignite and ignite rapidly and cause explosive gas effects that can be seen. Let's look at it again. As expected, we did see rapid ignition, less than a second to ignite at all, and rapid gas expansion. The lid was burned too. Here are photos of ignition residues resulting from a previous batch of this same formulation. Notice how much they look like World Trade Center dust particles. And an FTIR spectrum from the Livermore scientists matches well with that of and World Trade Center particle as well. There's much more work to be done, but evidence for nanothermite at the World Trade Center is compelling.